Hell! Oh, Spence Nico here with another figure review, or rather figures review. Not a pretty pair today, but as you can see, today we have got... Playing on your YouTube... NECA... Bioshock 2... Crawler Splicer... Lady Smith Splicer. Boom, baby. Honestly, these things kind of made me jump like crazy when I first played the first Bioshock because they just kind of pop in out of nowhere, like from the ceilings and stuff. And yeah, that was fun. I'm not, as I said on previous video, I'm not the biggest fan of jumpy kind of games and that, but I did enjoy Bioshock 1. I really, really did. Bioshock 2, currently playing it, as I said, in my big sister review how many started Bioshock 3 but since getting the big sister it's really made me want to get these I've now got these two plus the big sister and I have some little sisters on their way the uh, I don't know what they're called the Eleanor game girls the little girls I don't know what they're called I don't like saying that, that sounds creepy moving on now as you can tell these things are not the prettiest so if you are not a big fan of these please look away because I will be having a big old close-up at their pretty faces so, having a closer look at the actual packaging, you can see we have big open clamshell here with both figures on display here, their weapons and masks and whatnot all here. Then on the front we have a picture of the characters from the actual game. These aren't figure pictures, these are game pictures. Bioshock 2, and we've got Crawler Splicer and then Lady Smith Splicer in that lovely writing. Nothing really on the side there. Nothing really on the side there, nothing at the top, and then at the bottom you're going to have those lovely sculptors who create this stuff, and produce this stuff, and paint this stuff, and all kinds of other stuff. So my camera's not quite focusing, there you go. And you see Bioshock 2, NECA, Player Select, 2K, and some other warning labels. Moving around to the back, we do get a bio of each of the figures, and we have Bioshock 2 at the top there, and then we have here the Cruella Splicer and the Lady Smith Splicer. If I bring my camera over a bit... Hopefully you should be able to read that there, I'll leave that there for a second so you guys can pause and maybe read if you'd be interested, I'm not going to read them out. Scrolling down to the bottom of the box, you can see we do have also available the genetically enhanced collection call a picture of a little what are they called that's driving me insane i cannot think what they're called i should really should look that up on top of a big daddy so here we got those girls here little sister that's little sister and eleanor, eleanor lamb that's what i'm waiting for these two uh, i'm gonna be getting them friday well soon and then we've got a subject delta a big daddy rosie the Cooler Splicer, the Lady Smith Splicer, the Brute Splicer. What am I get one of them? They look pretty sweet. The Big Sister, which you guys saw. And then we've got here the big, sorry, big old light there. We've got here the Big Daddy. It's really hard trying not to get the light glare. Big Daddy Elite Bouncer. And then we've got the Big Daddy Light Up. And his little thing changes from red to yellow to blue to green. Which is cool, because... For those who haven't played the game, the Big Daddy kind of things turned. He generally walks around with that colour, and then when he sees you, he goes, green, yeah, red, and you're like, ah! And then it comes storming at you, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so... Now we've had a good old butchers at the box, let's crack these bad boys open! Just having a quick look at the backdrop that was behind the figures. As you can see, we have the nice kind of same thing we had with the little, the big sister. Water dripping in at the bottom from the top, and there's like fish going through the background. It's actually really nice. It's a nice little backdrop. It could make a pretty good scene. Eh, 
And we are back. Okay, so... Firstly, let's say, say, let me know what you guys think of the little box opening part that I'm doing in now. For it, throw it in. I thought I'd throw it in. I thought it'd be quite funky. Yeah, it's all fast forward and that. But, you know, sometimes that can be fun. Sometimes it can be lame. So let me know what you guys think. Now, in regards to these figures, what is my overall opinion of them? Honestly, they are older NECA figures. And unfortunately, they are prone to quite a few of the older style of NECA issues i.e. on the articulation is a bit simplistic especially on Lady Smith Splicer here but short of that I do think they're really really cool and I'm still proper stoked to have them now as you can see they each come with two weapons and a mask I think this is how you're supposed to have them I originally thought the shotgun was supposed to go with the Cruel Splicer but after looking on the back of the packaging it looks like he's got the hooks uh, well actually it doesn't, you can't see his hands if I show you so, he's got nothing in his hands, but here she's got the shotgun. Same for that one's got nothing, and that one she's got a Tommy gun, so that's helpful. But for those of you who haven't played the game, slight spoiler is that basically the whole thing is about a place called Rapture, and it's this paradise under the ocean, which is a very, very cool concept, and it's a really, really... It's a really decent game, I do really enjoy playing the game. But the whole thing about it is that you can mess with your DNA, basically, and you can become better, I suppose. I don't know if better is the right kind of wording, but you can become different. Yeah, let's go with that. Unfortunately, splices have taken it a bit too far, and they've kind of become a bit more like addicts to them, and they've kind of become genetic things. <laughs> Again, it's probably the best way to describe them. So... Let's take a close look at these figures and their details and their accessories. Okay, so starting off, here we have the Lady Smith mask. Now, this thing is actually really well done. It's a very soft plastic. The whole thing is very, very soft rubber. And even the strap on the back. But it's really well done. It's got this nice feathery sculpt to it. And they're really well detailed. There's some nice texture going in with the feathers and some nice paint apps also. As with the parts around the eyes, again, really, really well done. The back of it's a bit more simplistic, not so much paint apps, but then the sculpt still does continue, so that is pretty cool. Then my probably my favourite accessory in this whole lot is the shotgun. This thing is really sweet, I do really like it. It's very well made. The slight off with the lineup of the barrel, if you can see there that's supposed to be one whole piece, but they're a bit raised, which is a bit unfortunate. But apart from that, it's really nice. Really good sculpts on the handle. Nice paint apps. Really well done. I can't really see any blemishes or anything. So very happy with that. And then her final accessory is like a little wrench here. Which is again, really well sculpted. Some nice paint apps on it. And some really great detail for such a small thing. This thing is tiny. It's like about twice the size of my thumbnail. It's absolutely tiny. Very, very nice. Now she also comes with a base, but it's just a very simple, plain black matte, well, plain black base. It's hollow, and it's got just the one peg in it. She does have two peg holes, but it's only got the one peg for her. You're going to see plenty of fun prints on there. You always can with these kind of bases. But still, it's nice to have that because she's got really small feet, which I will show you in a second. And then a closer look at her pretty little face. Look at her face. God, wow. She is gorgeous. Only slightly more better attractive than my uh, ex. Uh, moving on. <laughs> really, really, really grotesque face sculpt here. And they really went to town with that. Neca, as per usual, is amazing with their face sculpts. The hair, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. It looks like the sculpt kind of stops there. And then there's a bit of paint on the actual head. So I don't know if that's intentional or accidental. So it's a bit weird. Then you've got the sculpt of the hair is really, really good very well done and the way the hair kind of curls up does make it a nice like groove to put the band for the mask the details on the eyes and the lips and there's blood splat off there really really well done and as you scroll down you can see here you've got some beads here on the chest and then like nice spot with some really great texturing going in on the actual uh, outfit I don't know if you can see that now she's got two completely different arms this one's completely clothed pretty much with maybe a patch here but this one's completely barren but then it's really swollen here so that's quite interesting. 
and very veiny. That goes back to what I was saying about the splicing. And then if you continue down, you can see more spots going down on the uh, dress here. It's really nice. Bit of naughtiness showing a bit of the old undergarments where her dress was torn away. The dress is actually a very soft rubber, which it would be really great to help the articulation, but unfortunately her articulation is very lacking, and I will show you that in a bit. Now, when you continue down to the actual legs, you can see this one you've got like a big old bit of, I don't even know, like a sack of flesh, and then there's like a tentacle wrapping around her ankle, but then she does have a shoe on and like a sock. Whereas this one, on the other hand, doesn't. It's kind of like a hoof. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Have a look at the back of the figure again. You can see the same kind of hoof thing I was referring to. It's like a little kind of claw here. But there is some real nice paint apps in there to make it look really dirty and grummy. And it's got this kind of like gloss to it as well. And same with this sock. There's some great texture in there. As with the tentacle going around, it does look really, really nice. Even the shoes paint really well. And like I said, those uh, peg holes there. Little like sash going down around the waist here. Which does look pretty cool. And again, it's kind of got one of those sack things on the waist. I'm not quite sure what these are. But then the back of her dress is torn down the middle and her gloves look really, really dirty. And you can see that even more so there. As for the crawler splicer, he comes with these two little hooks and they're just a simple silver. They've got kind of like a bend in them. They're both identical and he does hold them fine, but that's pretty cool. I don't know if they're meant to have that bend in them, but they've both got it, so I'm guessing they do. But they are really nice. Like I said, very simple. And they both fit in his hand really nice. I'll show you that in a bit. And then his mask is pretty cool. It's one of those big long nose masks, which you saw in the Victorian ages. And then you've got kind of like curls going around the nose, around the eyes. And almost like this eye patch has been stitched in. Like there's a bit of stitching there. Very simplistic on the back. But it does have some texture to it. I don't know how well it's going to come over on camera. But it's a really nice mask. And again, it's a very soft rubber piece. Sorry, I don't know why I was so far over there. It's a, again, it's a really nice and it's very soft rubber. Everything is very soft rubber in it, so I'm not really worried about damaging it or it damaging the figure. And then for the actual figure itself, man, this guy's even prettier than she is. Really not sure what's going on with this one. It's like he's got a bit of head stitched over his head. It looks very, very weird and incredibly disturbing. I apologise if there's any young kids looking. I did warn you that this is going to be quite a disturbing video. But some really great detail in there. The texture in the teeth and the way it's all painted, even in the mouth. The mouth is painted even inside to show the flesh colours. So that's really impressive. Then scrolling down, you've got his some nice paint apps in the neck there. He's got a very grey skin tone going throughout. And then his like little tank top here, which is like really just shredded and filthy. Looks absolutely disgusting. His arms very scrawny, they've got some lumps in them, they're really elongated, they're very long arms. And then you go down to his trousers and again they're really filthy. The final is pretty cool, I do like it, is that these uh, suspenders are actually a soft rubber and they don't really hinder the articulation at all, they're really really cool, I like that. They're actually a floating piece, so that's very funky. Again, like I said, like down to his trousers, these are like now shorts practically and they're just shredded and absolutely filthy what worries me right is how weird my mind is it thinks of random things if his trousers are that dirty i hate to think what his underwear looks like you know <laughs> that's because i saw the uh lady garment showing in the lady splicer but again like i said these are really shredded up and they just look really absolutely gross and manked up and then coming down a bit more to his feet he goes little socks with his like toes pointing out but his Toes are really weird, like he's got four toes on each foot. But they're not human toes anymore. And again, two peg holes. So really cool. Take a look at the back of the figure, you can see again, you've got those sock, uh, what are they called? I don't know what these things are called. Things that hold the socks up. Never worn a pair of these in my life, never will. He says, wait till I get older. And then again, that really shredded look on the back of his trousers. More dirt and the braces. Then the back of the head and the neck. There's a lot of like rippling going in the back of the neck there. All just really, really cool. Okay, size comparison time. So the scrawler stands about seven and a quarter inches tall, whereas the lady splicer, if I go on the base, probably about six and a quarter. Well, maybe just over six and a quarter inches tall. 
standing next to the only actual other Bioshock figure I have, the big sister. Very nicely in scale. Really want to get some more of these guys. And the usual suspects, a Bucky Cap, Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Girl, and Hyperion. Okay, so for articulation for the Lady Smith Spy Splicer, so remove the base, and like I said, to get a stand, I don't know if it's possible with how... Oh, there you go. But she's leaning over quite a bit. Now, the head is on a ball peg. We've gone blurry. There you go. She can look back that much, and forward, well, quite a bit, to be honest. And you've got a bit from a pivot from side to side, so it's like a ball peg that goes in up there. Sorry, was <laughs> every time I talked, I could feel my... Uh, seat vibrating. I think my seat was resting against the tripod. Uh, you can rotate her around 360 degrees and the hair, the shape of it doesn't really hinder it except for looking really far back. Shoulders are on ball discs and they can go around 360 degrees but this is a hard plastic so you are going to get a hindrance when you go up. And it can go out that much. Now this is where my gripe comes in with this figure. No bicep rotation, no elbow rotation but she does have a cut but it's at this angle. So if I put it like that, so that's like straight out. So there's the hinge facing this way. It's like that. So it's at an off angle, so you can't even really bring it in front for anything to really look good. And there's no other rotation, so it just looks a bit weird. This one, similar again. So again, you can rotate it around, 360 degrees. You can bring it out, and then she's got a rotation there. Probably the best you can get is less than 90. At least with this one, you can get more than 90. But still, I'm not a fan of these designs, and especially when they kind of don't really work well with the actual figure's articulation, so it just looks bad. There's no wrist rotation, no glove rotation whatsoever, so that's it. So that's unfortunate. Then there's a diaphragm joint, which is pretty cool, and it's hidden really well by this belt just here. So it should go forward that much, and back that much, pivot from side to side, and you can rotate her around 360 degrees on that. Now, like I said, this is a soft plastic rubber, which would help with the articulation, but only has a swivel at the hip. And in fact, you can see just there where our undergarments are, you can see a cut. And that's what it is, just a simple cut on the thigh there. So she can do a Spartan of that, and I can't even get a split due to the skirt. And then on her left leg, so the one here, she has a rotation at the sock. So you can rotate that around 360 degrees. But that is it, she has nothing else. Now, while I've got her here, I'll show you how to put her accessories in. How I do it is kind of slide the back of the shotgun in, get down here, then kind of put the other triggers under this. It's got a double trigger, which is weird. And then just line up the main trigger finger with that big hole. Sorry about that, didn't want to get in there. There you go, and that's how best way to get to hold the shotgun. And then the spanner, that's just gonna, whoops, sorry. And that'll just fit in there just nice, just an easy like that. And then the mask, just slide that over. Line up the nose. Bring the strap down. And then she's ready to go a bopping. Okay, so now onto the Crawler Spicer. His articulation is actually a lot better, to be honest, but still I do have a few gripes with it. So, his head can go that far back, so really far back. In fact, I think he's supposed to be hunched over, because if you stand him up straight, when you push him forward, it looks like he's kind of trying to eat his own throat. <laughs> but you can go that far back, that far forward, and you can pivot just from there to there, but you can rotate that around 360 degrees. Shoulders are on ball hinges and they can go around 360 degrees and they can go up that far, maybe a bit further on this one. Yeah, because that one's got a, like a little lump there, this one doesn't. Bicep rotation, 360 degrees. Single bending elbow, but really decent, so plus over 90 easy. And then has a cut in the wrist. One thing I've got to point out, is like a little pinky, it's like shriveled up. And it does make it a bit awkward getting in his weapons, which I will show you in a second. Then there's a diaphragm joint here, which is hidden by his vest, it's kind of about here on the actual figure. But you can go forward that much, back 
that much. And like I said, these suspenders are floating pieces, so you just have to work them. Careful not to stretch them or overstretch them or snap them. And you go side to side, and you could rotate that around 360 degrees if you probably undid the suspenders. Nothing in the waist. And then he has like up facing hip, so they're going straight up there. So this one can do a Spartan if I push that forward and that back of that. And then you'd have to kind of rotate them round like that to do a split kick, which looks a bit weird. But still better than some. You know, I just found out bit for articulation. I didn't even know that. Okay, so as you just saw, he has a rotation at the knee, above the knee, then a single bend in the knee, but only like to there, so not even quite 90. As I've just found, which I did not know is, there is a rotation just at the sock strap. So you can rotate that around 360 degrees. There is no other articulation in this figure, so his feet are stuck kind of hunched forward. So when you kind of put him, you want to kind of get him a bit hunched like that. I'm getting like hunched forward. It's probably the best way to, to pose this character, which actually looks pretty good. Now, grabbing his little fish hooks, or whatever you want to call them, I kind of think it's best to get past that little finger, like I was mentioning, and then line up over the other three. And they should just, he says optimistically, there you go. So to put it on upside down. There you go. So one hook. Get past that little finger. Two hooks. So he's ready to take on Wolverine. He's the claw. And then of course you can get his mask. And that just will sit on his head like that. Right. Anyway guys, that is my review. So final thoughts on these figures. Would I recommend them? To be honest, yes they are good figures if you're a big avid fan of NECA and a big fan of the Bioshock franchise then I would definitely recommend these figures. I feel a bit let down with the Lady Smith Splicer. Pretty satisfied with the Crawler Splicer. I know you can buy these individually and I might buy a couple more of him. Don't think I'll buy any more of her though. Definitely not the best female form figure out there. Anyway guys, that is my review. I hope you have enjoyed this video. As per usual, I've really enjoyed making it and if you have, please drop me a like down below. As for you guys, please leave any comments you'd like to add about my channel, all these figures, or anything you'd like to ask me whatsoever. Please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as for you guys, thanks for watching, keep collecting, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>